So, whenever you're ready, yes, sir. Okay, ladies. Whoop. You never know when you grab a mic and you hold it too close or too far. So, good evening, everybody. Um, as we wait for for more folks to come in, we're going to go ahead and honor your time this evening. Um, it is seven o'clock, so again, we're going to honor your time and start on time, um, so we can get you out and up and around, so the community can interact with the committee and the committee can gather feedback. Um, so, my name is George Roberts. I currently serve as the community superintendent for Zone Two, um, and. In a previous life, I was principal here at Perry Hill High School for six years, um, and really six of the best years of my professional career were spent in this building. Um, and I have the honor and privilege of still working with Perry Hall High School, but the entire Perry Hall feeder pattern, and all soon to be 10 schools within the feeder pattern in Perry Hall. So this evening is part of a pretty lengthy process. And we thank you all, the community, for coming out this evening and sharing some of your valuable time and offering your input and your feedback. And certainly what has been a very deliberate process held by our committee members, who for the most part, I keep looking to my right because our committee is sitting over here to my right in front of you. Um, about two months ago, this committee came together through, a, again, a very deliberate process of selection and representation from all the schools that were involved in this boundary process. Um, so we have a principal and we have three members from the school community, um, parents and staff members who represent each of the schools that are involved in this process. So for every two weeks in the past two months, they would meet here in a big U, and you can see all the videos, everything's public and archived on the BCPS website. Um, and what they did is they started from the very beginning and looking at the mission of why they're coming together. It isn't just about, okay, we're building a new school and let's see where we can kind of fill that school. It's not that. It's about balance. It's looking at equity, equity considerations. It's looking at um, number of students in a school. It's looking at multiple, multiple characteristics that go into shifting one planning block and you'll certainly learn more and see the planning blocks around you and the impact of that and what makes sense and what happens if we move one planning block from here to there. So as you look across the way, these are your community members, these are your neighbors. These are not only your principals within your schools and your teachers, but they're your neighbors. So they bring that perspective, they bring that flavor to this process in saying, and many of them have, hey, you know what, there's this creek that runs along here, or there's this boundary here that Mr. Cropper and our um, facilitator may not have been aware of. So it's been a wonderful process, and I want to thank the committee for all of their time, all of their efforts. This is super, super hard work, and they volunteer their time to do it because they love their community and they want to make their community even stronger. So before I hand it over to Mr. Cropper, I want to go over a little bit of the format. Um, this evening, just to clarify, some people come to these public input sessions um, and we want to make sure you understand how this format's going to work. So this isn't the end and this isn't the last time that you as a community can provide input. You can always provide continuous input through the website. There's an active link on the homepage where you can provide input. That input is shared with the committee members. So every two weeks when they meet, they get input and they see your questions, they see your emails, and Mr. Cropper builds that in to the next session where they get your feedback. So that's a 24-7 opportunity for you to provide feedback. How this evening will work, and Mr. Cropper will go into a little more detail, is once he goes through a brief summary of the past two months and how the process has evolved, how, we, how the committee landed on these three um, preliminary recommendations, he'll go through that so you understand where we started and how we got to where we are right now. At that point, everyone will get up. The committee members will spread out. There's four stations. You'll see the maps, the exact same maps spread out throughout the cafeteria. That is your opportunity to engage with the committee members one-on-one. -on -one. When we've gone through this before, we see sometimes small groups will form and the committee members are answering questions, they're taking notes, they provide their computer set up in the back where you can, if you have a question, you can type it in in real time for the committee to review. So it gives you real close one-on-one -on -one opportunity to interact with the committee members and share your input, share your ideas, share your concerns, your considerations. So when they meet again two weeks from now, they can continue. Then ultimately as we go into the early winter time, January, February, these options get whittled down to ultimately the committee making a recommendation 
The Board of Education will then hold a public hearing where there's another opportunity face-to-face, -face, live if you will, for you to provide input to the Board of Education. That'll be at Perry Hall Middle School. And then ultimately from there, we go towards a final recommendation to the Board of Education. And that's another opportunity through the public comment portion of the Board of Education meetings for you to provide, for the community to provide additional input. So I share that with you to say that this is the first step or really the second step because the email link has been open for the entire two months. So now it's the, really the first step of face-to-face -face live input that the community can get because up to now the community just sits in the back as observers. All right. So at this point I want to, before I hand it over to Mr. Cropper, I want to thank, we have Senator Klausmeyer here and it's, Senator Klausmeyer is one of the biggest, staunchest advocates and supporters here at Perry Hall. So our Senator from Perry Hall. So Senator Klausmeyer, thank you so much for coming out this evening. We appreciate your time. Go ahead. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this process through the Board of Education Policy is built on transparency. And as I mentioned, the committee members are made up of parents. Um, so certainly representative of that and now your time to share with them. So at this point, I looked over and saw this was Matt. Matt's over here. So Matt Cropper of Cropper GIS is going to carry you forward for the next five, ten minutes or so and give you further direction. Uh, if anyone would like a Spanish translation services, we have Miss Jones with us this evening. Um, si ustedes quieren uh, escuchar en español, uh, Señora Jones uh, está aquí esta noche. Gracias. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you guys. Thank you, Mr. Roberts, and thank you all for, for coming tonight. Um, the committee has been hard at work up to this point, and we're excited to share some of the, the work that the committee has been doing uh, with you tonight. Our real purpose for tonight is for you to learn uh, how the community-based boundary process has been working, uh, to review draft boundary options for elementary schools in the study area, which as Mr. Roberts said, we have four copies of the maps scattered about so that you have plenty of space to review maps and get up, get up and close and look at the maps and also the statistics. And then finally, the most important part of tonight is for you to complete an online survey, um, which will be op open all the way until November the 8th. And uh, that is a survey that, that uh, enables the committee to benefit from, from feedback from parents and, and, and concerned members and people from the public. Um, and please tell people who are not able to come tonight, who couldn't come to, to this public information session, that they can view this presentation uh, as it's being recorded right now, and they can also participate in the survey um, online. So there, so there is an opportunity for people to participate, even if they have not, uh, were not able to make it to tonight's meeting. So to give you a little bit of background, uh, this, we're in the process of a boundary change study in this area. And um, a boundary is essentially a line, a, a, a zone, or an area that defines uh, the, what students go to that school. Um, the boundary, in, in order to create a boundary or to change a boundary in Baltimore County Public Schools, it's guided by policy and Rule 1280. And so there are s specific rules and, uh, and policies in place that this committee is focused on to, to, as they start to evaluate boundary changes. And so any boundary change adjustment that they consider they always ask themselves, are we getting closer to adhering to the overall uh, considerations and po policy in Rule 1280? Um, it's facilitated, this process is facilitated by an independent consultant, which is myself. I am Matthew Cropper with Cropper GIS Consulting. Um, and it's driven by community committee, principals, teachers, and parents. And so I'm not here to provide opinions. I'm not here to, to, to tell the committee what I think they should and should not do. I'm here to help empower the committee with the ability to make accurate and informed decisions and to understand the impacts um, of moving an area one way or the other through technology and maps. Um, and this process uh, does involve a very thorough and objective examination of data. Uh, the committee creates options throughout the course of the process, and they, they talk and they work in small groups, and they're deliberating on what uh, the pros and cons of different options, and they're looking at how to make options better and how to generate new options. 
And finally, they're engaging with the public here tonight to get some of your input and to hear and listen to your concerns or your thoughts about the options, but, but to really encourage you to participate in the survey so that the whole committee and everybody who's involved in the process can benefit from all of your feedback and input. Finally, this uh, results in a recommendation to the Board of Education. So this is one part of the process, and uh, once the committee's work is done, um, it's still a draft. Everything is draft until it goes to the Board of Education and gets approved by the Board of Education. So nothing is set in stone. Everything is subject to change based on, um, based on further uh, input that we get from the public and further examination from the committee. And, um, and finally, just looking at how can we make these scenarios better or a recommendation that best meets the overall um, rules and, um, and policy that's been set. I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. A little bit just about um, our, us, we are Cropper GIS Consulting. We work with school districts all over the country everywhere from 2,000 to 200,000 students, and this is, our, this is our specialty. We do this type of work all over the country. We bring uh, technology to the, to the table in terms of uh, enabling the committee to be able to have uh, accurate information in the form of maps and statistics. And we also bring a lot of experience in what has and what hasn't worked across the country as it relates to uh, boundary change studies just like this. So we've worked with districts in, in Maryland and, and on the East Coast and all over, all over the U.S. Um, and, and doing work like this. And so we do bring that to the table and uh, the benefit from some of that expertise. We also have Ms. Melanny Bell here who has been helping with to facilitate the process. And, she, and she's been very helpful in, in, in this process as well and as we uh, continue to work through, um, through options development and the boundary changes. And the committee um, is, is sitting primarily on this side of the room because we had a little orientation at the beginning. I believe we have about 40 commi committee members that have been working through this process. Um, they represent each school community. Um, they, they suspend their parochial interests, which means that we, we tell them to not focus solely on the area that they live in or the, or the school that they represent, but they really need to focus on what's best for the entire study area, the, all of the schools that are impacted. The best plan is going to be one that doesn't best address one school or one neighborhood or one street or student, but what's best for all of the schools in the entire study area. Um, they meet six times from September to, to, to December, so we have two more meetings after this to continue the work. Um, and they collabor collaborate exclusively with each other, and the public is welcome to come observe these meetings. There are tables set up during the committee meetings to the side, and the, committee, the public is welcome to come observe and watch the process as it, as it continues. And as I said, they will be presenting a recommendation to the board uh, via the community superintendent. So we've met four times starting in September, and it brings us to where we are right here. Um, we have two more meetings, uh, one on November the 15th and December the 6th, in working with the committee. And then the, there's, uh, uh, at this point, they will have a recommendation to present to the school board, which will be presented on February the 6th to the, um, to the Board of Education. After that, that recommendation is, is presented to the board, there is a series of public hearings uh, or a public hearing, it's on February 21st, and that's at Perry Hall Middle School, and that's where, it, once this process ends here, it's out of the committee's hands, and then from here on out, it starts, it, it's in the board's hands. So the board takes the recommendation, they, they, they hear from the public, so you have the opportunity to go to Perry Hall Middle School and voice your opinion about the recommendation and any, any thoughts and observations that you have about them, and then the board will make their decision on March 6th to approve a plan. Um, it, the plan could be adjusted and modified after the recommendation. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't happen. It's really up to the school board to, 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 at that point. A little bit about the Northeast area. Uh, the, the district is in the midst of a $1.3 billion Schools for Our Future Capital Plan to add capacity to support increasing enrollment and to improve facilities um, across the district. This includes accelerating the process of air conditioning in schools as well as expanding schools, building new schools to help uh, address the, cr the, uh, the, the growth that's occurred across the, the district. Um, this plan, Schools for Our Future, and the, the BCPS FY 2019 capital request uh, which was submitted in October, identifies some new schools in this area that, the, to help provide relief to capacity. The primary focus of this committee is the new North, 
new elementary school at Joppa Road, which anticipated 725 seats, um, and it's anticipated to open in August 2018. So this sits uh, right off of uh, Joppa and not far off of Honey Go. Um, as you drive down, you'll see there's, a, it, it's hard to see now, but they're starting construction into it. And that's the school that this, this committee is focused on creating a boundary for to help relieve schools in the study area. But in addition to that, there are other schools that are planned in the area to help provide some further relief. There's a new elementary school that's planned at Ridge Road, which is anticipated to open in August 2020. So you'll notice that um, even with the new school, when you start looking at some of the statist statistics, even with the new school, this area is about 102% utilized uh, overall, the total utilization of number of students versus seats. And the, the, um, you'll notice that in some of the figures and some of the options, schools in the southern part of our study area are, are still on a higher utilization. And you'll notice that some of that is because that some of those schools at the southern part of the, of the, of the study area, uh, Joppa View and Perry Hall, where the boundaries stretch in the south, are anticipated to get some further relief through uh, future school construction as well to help, to help provide some additional relief down the road when this new school at Ridge Road opens in 2020. In addition to that, there's a planned uh, uh, facility at Red House Run, uh, addition at Red House Run Elementary, which is planned in August uh, 2021. So that sits right about in this area. Um, so these three schools are anticipated to help provide relief to the schools in this, in this region. Um, but the focus, as I said, the, the, the Ridge Road and the other Red House Run schools are not part of this committee's focus. Their focus is really the new elementary school that's off of, uh, off of uh, Joppa, Joppa Road. Um, so it's at Joppa and Chapel Road. It's planning to open in 2018-19 for 725 students. Um, all nine schools in the study area that they're focused on are overcrowded. Um, five of the schools in this area exceed 115% of the capacity, and Perry Hall Elementary is at 130% of its capacity. So there is definitely overcrowding in the area and a need to pr provide relief, capacity relief to schools in this region. All of these schools that are listed here, Kearney, Chapel Hill, Gunpowder, Joppa View, Kingsville, Oakley, um, which is just the, uh, the Oakley has a satellite area that, ex that exists near Kearney uh, Elementary School that the focus is trying to help resolve that satellite area for Oakley is the pr primary focus for Oakley. And then Perry Hall, Seven Oaks, and Vincent Farm. All of these schools have people sitting around the table evaluating options. And as I said, these committee members, uh, they represent these schools and they're affiliated with these schools. But they're, they're the biggest value of these committee members is that they know what traffic is like in different areas and neighborhoods throughout this area, ar around these schools. Where kids can walk to school, where they see sidewalks, and where, 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 st where students can't cross over the roads, and things like that. So they bring a good local perspective that me, as an outsider, doesn't have and doesn't know some of those things. So, um, so the, 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 that's the real value of the committee uh, that they bring to the table. The overall objectives of this process to, to help define success for this process is to reduce overcrowding in the region as a whole, uh, create viable successful boundaries to excessive, uh, effectively utilize the added capacity at the new Northeast Area uh, Elementary School and other schools involved in the study, and to support diversity among schools that reflect the community and the school system. So they're looking at all these factors and evaluating uh, the best plan that, that meets these as a whole. These are the considerations that the committee's focused on when they start to evaluate the, the, if, the, um, if, if a boundary change uh, makes sense or not. And these are per Rule 1280, so you can go on the BCPS webpage and look at these. But they are to maintain the continuity of neighborhoods, maintaining or increasing diversity among schools uh, to reflect the diversity of the region and the school system, the impact of transportation and pedestrian patterns on students, minimizing the number of times any inv individual students are reassigned, efficient use of capacity in affected schools, long-term enrollment and capacity trends and future capital plans, uh, location of feeder school boundaries and continuity of feeder patterns. So we're looking at uh, only at elementary schools here. N no change is being uh, proposed or drafted by this committee has any impact on middle or high school boundaries or high school, middle or high school assignment. It's solely elementary school uh, boundary change. 
uh, phasing in boundary changes by grade level for high schools. And again, this is part of the overall rule, but it doesn't really apply to this group since they're focused only on elementary schools. One thing to note with these considerations is that the best plan is going to be one that, that touches on all of these criteria or these rules as a whole. If you, if you focus only on one of these elements of the rules, you start to deviate further away from the others. And knowing that no plan is going to be perfect as a result of this, I think the committee has, has realized that and that when we work all over the country, no plan is ever perfect, but the best plan is one that adheres to these rules as a whole as best as possible. The committee has met four times, as I said, since September and spent many hours reviewing uh, uh, materials in between meetings. Uh, they reviewed eight different variations of draft options. You can go online and look at the different maps that they have reviewed up to date. They have narrowed it down to three options for you tonight, um, which are A, B, and C. They've been making changes based on overall uh, uh, input and uh, understanding the area and with a focus on those rules. Looked at uh, lots of data and information. You'll see there's a plot, uh, a large map of uh, statistics that accompany the maps, and that's something that you can look at, which is also the, the committee has been looking at. And uh, again, everything is draft. Even after, this, after tonight, everything is draft, and the committee will continue to look at evaluating options and making, creating new ones or making modifications of these based on uh, adhering to the overall objectives and rules. The committee is charged to recommend one option to the board, um, it, if, if at all possible, uh, to the superintendent, which the superintendent will then present that to the Board of Education. And nothing's final until it is approved by the Board of Education. So when you start to look at the maps, there will be committee members and myself will be gathered around the maps to help you understand and interpret the, interpret the boundaries. But you'll notice um, the background color on the maps represent the options. So we have A, B, and C. And you'll notice the shapes of the schools vary from option to option. Um, so that background color represents the, the, the option or the potential zone or boundary for that school. And there's a black outline on the map too that represents the current boundary so you can see uh, what areas have been impacted. There are also little planning blocks, what we call, and these are the building blocks for boundary changes. The committee looks at this and each planning block has an ID number and it has a total number of students that live in the zone and that helps the public and also the committee understand if they make a change one way or the other how many students would a school gain or lose and how would that have an impact on the, the, the statistics, some of the statistics that they're looking at. Um, as I said there's a series of tables uh, that are posted up here for your, for your review. We have enrollment information um, so that we can look at how many students live inside the boundaries, how many students are coming in for uh, pre-K and other types of elements and what is the utilization of the building based off of enrollment. Um, each option uh, is estimated a, a number of students, that total number of students that, that would uh, attend the building based on, um, based on the, the boundaries that are drawn for that school. And you can see the current enrollment and then how each option differs from the current. And then we also have another table, it shows the same type of data, but it shows the percent utilization. So this shows you the percent, how full is the building, what's the percent full. And then also how many seats are available or over, how many over, seats over capacity are there. If it's, a, if it's a positive number, that's how many seats there are over capacity. If it's negative, that means how many seats they still have available before they get to 100%. We've also been looking at uh, demographic data, so we look at percent minority and the impact on percent minority for each school for any particular option. And then free and reduced lunch percentage um, uh, is also reflected here so that we can look at socioeconomics and look at the impact of, um, of uh, free and reduced lunch. Uh, one thing I forgot to note that, that I wanted to mention as well is that you'll notice that in some of these options, the new elementary school, especially in B and C, is below, uh, below capacity. Um, and that one of the reasons is the committee is, is focused on looking at um, all factors, but the new elementary school, the site is limited in size. There's not a whole lot of space there for if, if that school does start to get overcrowded and start to, as growth continues, there's not much space there for portables, for uh, modular units or trailers uh, that, that is a common method to help relieve overcrowding. So you'll notice that some of the options, the new elementary school is on the lighter side of utilization, and that's just so that, so that you can, they're, they're trying to be proactive in understanding that, that there's not much space on that site for trailers and modulars if, if the need does arise. 
We've also been evaluating the number of students that are impacted in any particular option, so you can see the numbers there. And then current walk zones uh, in, in each option, how many students can walk to school. And in the current options, there are no students, uh, walkers that are impacted. All students that can walk to school based on the BCPS established walk zones can uh, still walk to school based on the current draft options. So as we said, tonight's a gallery walk. We're inviting you to look at the maps and talk with us, uh, staff and consultants and committee members, um, and, uh, and, just, and discuss these with you. Although discussion's important, we really encourage you to fill out the survey. That's really the most important thing of tonight. Um, the survey's available October 25th through November the 8th, so you've got time to, to share this information with your neighbors, people who could not make it. Um, and the best feedback is constructive comments. So we're looking for feedback that helps us make changes that adhere to our rules and, uh, and considerations. So, um, and so th that's the real fruitful feedback that we can obtain, uh, is information and feedback that brings us closer to adhering our objectives and, uh, and considerations. You can go to the BCPS webpage to see, uh, to, to follow the process and to look at other information that's been, that's been shared with the committee. All the information that's shared with the committee is posted online with the, uh, the, the mind of being transparent and open in this process. We don't have anything to hide. And if you, uh, the survey doesn't, doesn't, if you feel like providing additional input, you can provide it through an email address. It's boundarystudy at bcps.org. And that way you can provide additional feedback if you feel, uh, if you feel to that is shared with the committee and also myself. Two more meetings in the next steps. We're meeting in November again with the committee. Uh, and in December to continue options and, and start working towards a recommendation for the Board of Education. So with that, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna open the floor for uh, Mr. Roberts, yes. Two quick items before you're dismissed to um, go through the gallery walk. Any BCPS staff that are here, if you could raise your hand. We have staff from transportation, their hands are raised. Um, so transportation in the back. Um, we have student services here. Um, strategic planning, Janie Lichter, our executive director for elementary schools is here. So if you have questions about special transfers, um, just there's usually some um, questions we expect around if my child is a second grader and when this happens, or a third grader or a fourth grader. So questions about that or transportation or anything that you have, seek out one of us, we have our name tags on and we can help you. And then lastly, over here to my left, um, you'll see this little station here, this little table here with the, with the board. Charlene Benke, Charlene, if you can stand up, raise your hand. Um, Mrs. Benke is the new principal for, well, a veteran principal with the new principal of Northeast Elementary. She's opening, she has the privilege of opening the school this fall. Um, so she will be here um, in this area. If you wanna see a map, ask her any questions about her new school. Um, she's going to be available in this section um, for you if you have any questions. So that's it for me, Matt. Yes, to, uh, to come look at the maps and talk with committee members and ourselves, and we'd be happy to, to discuss anything with you. And thank you all, and we look forward to talking with you.